Hello children, welcome to CA session. Students, today we will continue the same chapter, chapter 7, openoffice.org writer 1. Students, today we will discuss about non-printing characters. So in writer or any word processing document, you might have seen like uh, when you prepare the document, you have pressed some keys like space key, enter key and tab key. So something happens, but these keys do not print anything on the screen. When we take the printout of the document, then also we will not be able to see these types of means effect of these keys on the printed paper. So students, if you want to see that where we have pressed space key, enter key, tab key, then we will use show hide button. You will be able to see show hide button in standard toolbar. Standard toolbars are below formatting toolbars. So in standard toolbar, we have to click on show hide button. So when we click on show button, we will be able to see dot in place of space, then show hide character in place of enter key and arrow in place of tab keys. So wherever we have used these three keys, when we click on this, we will be able to see these symbols in place of these keys. So when we don't want to see non-printing characters, we can again click on hide button. Okay. Now, saving a document. To save a document, we have to click on file in the menu bar and then we have to choose option save. Then after that, it will ask us the name of the file. So, we can give the name of the file and then we have to click on save button. We have another option of save as. So, for that, we have to click on save as in file menu and then the dialog box will appear. There, we can give the name to a file and we can click on save button. Otherwise, we have a shortcut key also. Control S. And for save as also, we have the shortcut key and that is Control Shift S. So, if we have to save the document in the specific location, then we can click on any of the option. Like we click on file and then save. Then the file dialog box will appear. There we have to go to the specific folder location. Means the specific folder in which we want to save the document. And then we have to give the name to a file. Okay, means in the name box we have to type the name of the file with which we have to save it. And then we have to click on save button. So this way the file will be saved in a specific location. Now students, closing a document. So if we have to close the document, we can click on close in the file menu. We have to go in file menu and then we will get the options. We have to click on close button. So this way the document will close. The software will, application will not close. So if we want to close the document and we have not saved the document yet, then a prompt will appear. That means a pop-up will appear and in that pop-up it will ask us that do you want to save the document before closing? Then you can click on save to save the document. You can click on discard to discard the document. Means if you want, don't want to save the changes. And you can click on cancel to simply abort. Now, exiting writer. Exiting writer means closing the window. Exit from writer window. So, we have to click on file in the menus. And then we have to choose exit option. So, exit will close the writer window. Now, we will study about some word processing terminologies. There are some important words we should know in writer. Like margin. You might have seen margin in your notebook also. There is a left margin. We can make right margin. Top margin is also there. And bottom margin is also there. So here students, whenever we prepare the document, automatically the document is arranged with some margins. So there are four types of margins. Left margin, top margin, right margin and bottom margin. You can see. So margin means the distance between the text to the paper edge. Here you can see the text is written and there is a gap between the text and the paper edge. This is the paper edge, the paper boundary. And this space is known as margin. So if there is a space between the left edge and the text, then it is left margin. If there is a space between the text and the top edge, then it is top margin. Then if there is space between the text and the right edge of the paper, then it is right margin. And if it is the distance between the text and the 
bottom edge of the paper then it is known as bottom margin so there are in total four types of margins left margin top margin right margin and bottom margin now students we will discuss about columns you might have seen this type of text arrangement in newspapers okay you can see the text the paragraph will automatically arrange in the next column so in the single page we can have so many columns according to the requirement so columns display the newspaper like columns so if you want columns like this as we used to have in newspapers or magazines then we can simply select the text and click on columns option and the and then choose the number of columns now word wrapping word wrapping we have already discussed that means the text will be automatically arranged between left margin and the top margin that is word wrapping word wrapping means simply placing the text going beyond the right margin if the text reaches to the right margin and without going beyond the right margin the text will automatically shift to the next line okay that is known as word wrapping okay so here we don't have to press enter key automatically text will come to the next line as soon as it reaches to the right margin that means we can also say that fitting the text within the margins now indentation students you might have seen like while while writing the paragraph you always put some space before first time line of the paragraph like this so that is indentation that means the distance between the text boundary means the text boundary text and the paper margin so we can increase and decrease the space before a line then that is known as indentation so we have three types of indentations positive indent negative indent and hanging indent so positive indent means as we used to have normally in our text that is the space before the first line of the paragraph it mostly shows that we have started a paragraph now if we are having indentation like this that means we decrease the space before the first line of the paragraph that means it is negative indentation now hanging indentation hanging indentation means like this you can see when we insert the numbered list or bulleted list uh, these are various examples of hanging indents also whenever we insert a bulleted list or a numbered list then you might have seen that there is a slight space before these types of bullets and numbers okay before these listing okay and you will be able to see that it is quite different from rest of the paragraph so this is known as hanging indentation so students other examples of hanging indents are bibliographic entries glossary terms resume then bulleted numbered list etc now students will study about the paragraph indent versus page margin some of the students get confused with indentation as well as margin so margin means the overall gap between the text and the page edge paper edge that is margin you can see the main text here is space between the text and the right edge of the paper here there is a the space between the text and the left edge of the paper okay so this is margin but you can see there is a space between the margin okay this is actually the margin so here we have space between the margin and the text and here it also you can see the first line the distance between the margin and the text so this is indent okay so indentation can be there for a specific paragraph and the page margin is set for the main text of the page so students i hope you understood these concepts uh, only this much for today thank you have a nice day